Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the stream and welcome to the November Qualifier Serpents Open, the last tournament of the year and most likely the last open tournament that um, I'll cast uh, at least for a while. So pretty exciting things here in round one already. 11 players, unfortunately, one does have a buy. But we are on Mirror Island in this first round match. Uh, I am Night of Misfortune, joined by Spiff, who will introduce the players. Hello, everyone. We're going to show a little bit of color favoritism here and introduce our orange player first. It is Polar Bears, spawning in as the orange UEF commander. And uh, here on Mirror Island, he's doing he's doing the factory trick off the cliff. He's built some some uh, or he's building rather some I assume cruisers. And uh, yeah, here comes the first one now. Knight, what is going on on the other side of the map? On the other side of the map, we have uh, the German that's been improving considerably lately. <clears throat> he is our yellow Cybern commander with the name of Soul Ripper seventy seven. Uh, again, a very important distinction there. And he has opened up with an air factory and a land factory. I do like the air factory, but the land is kind of weird here since this map is so big. But it looks like he's rushing directly into those adapters. And I'm going to apologize here in uh, beforehand. I sound like I have the diarrhea trumpet again. And that's because I'm, I'm sick once again. So I do apologize and I'll let uh, Spiff talk a little more. And eventually, once I get some time, I'll actually drink a hot cup of tea, which hopefully will help with this. <clears throat> yeah, you know, it's all good. Night just sounds a little husky today. Um, <laughs> it's just got that, you know, that sexy lumberjack voice going on. Yes. That's actually a, a nicer way of putting it, I guess, than diarrhea trumpet, but... <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, those adapters turning out to be uh, exactly the right move here. And um, Night, uh, real quick, who's who's map pick was this who had the first pick this was polar's pick and uh soul ripper i would actually ask soul ripper because i was surprised he let this one through although we did see soul ripper actually beat i think a uef last time uh in the open tournament i think it was a Mogenra, and he did a really nice job here <clears throat> so i guess it's not super surprising but this generally is a better map for uef because of this start but normally with this, you would see the UEF transition into a little bit more air. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, Soul Ripper banned Emerald Crater, which he says he really doesn't like. And I actually think that map is probably a little better for UEF than this one is. So I guess it's not terribly surprising. Well, uh, again, the adapter is doing some good work here. Uh, Soul Ripper hasn't lost anything yet, although one of those mass extractors has taken a little bit of damage. Yep, and I don't think that cruiser is going to be able to reach that mass point over there. No, not quite. Um, and uh, you know, the problem with this uh, with this tech choice from Cybern is it is a little bit limiting. You got to dump those early research points into the adapters to stay safe, and then it gets a little bit harder to transition. And oh, it looks like that cruiser can just barely reach that mass extractor there. Oh wow. I guess Polar Bear knows. I was going to say, like, if he doesn't know the ranges, that's very surprising. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's a really nice pickoff then. Yeah. Well, one thing that's uh, really nice about StarCraft is you do have the opportunity to take a look at uh, the vision through the player's eyes. And I don't know if Polar Bear plays with the uh, the weapon range rings turned on or not. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure that everybody who's you know above average or even average in this game uses those i started using them a, a really long time ago and it's it's super useful absolutely <clears throat> and the, I, there's a hotkey for them too so it's easy to turn them on and off oh you, there is that's i didn't know thing. that that's that's actually yeah, very I, nice i don't remember what it is it's like control w or something like that yeah i have to look it up well, so Soul yeah. Ripper is still just running off of these two factories, although the air factory is turned off. So really just this one factory. 
Yeah, it's. Um, I think he's going to. His plan will be to slowly creep with land over there on the left hand side here, which I think is a good plan, especially since Polar Bear is kind of expanding up to the left as well. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's about even on mass points right now, I think. I don't know. It feels like Polar is ahead on mass because he had to travel less. He's got this cluster of four here, so he didn't have to run around between mass extractors. But I might be... I might be talking out of my ass. I don't know. Um... Polar hasn't really given us a hint as to his transition either. He's still just uh, pumping out cruisers from this one factory. Um, and, you know, the cruisers are keeping him really safe right now um, between that and these two air towers in his base. He is going to be making that transition over to air like you uh, insinuated, Knight. He's just taking his uh, sweet time about it, getting that eco up first. A research station going down for Soul Ripper now as well. Yeah, that's what I kind of expected from him a little earlier, and honestly from Polar Bear also. Um, even with that naval factory, I feel like he should have an abundance of a mass right now. So, um, yeah, I really don't know. Maybe he'll just use it to spam out air really quickly. But honestly, that's not. I don't think that's the best thing right now, no matter what the situation is. Yes, Soul Ripper doesn't oh, have that much air, but, I mean, there's adapters out in the field, so... Polar has spent a lot of money on these cruisers, though. I mean, I, I feel like it's more typical, or at least when I get rushed like this, it's usually just, like, two or three cruisers instead of, what are we at now, six? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think um, anybody who plays UEF like Jaywix or um, Zadaika would not have built this many cruisers. Because, I mean, on this map, at least, you don't need more than a few to do what you need them to do, which is just deny expansions and keep your opponent contained. Yeah. Yeah, and, and after a while, like, additional ones just become useless. I mean, he might be building them because he's hoping to break through the adapter somehow, but that's honestly not a great uh, thing to hope for because adapters are just outscale, I, th I feel like. <laughs> yeah, well, they're cheaper and they have defender's advantage. Cruisers are slow. Um, in terms, well, they're not that slow, but they're they're going to be a lot slower getting into the fight here. Whereas the adapters pop out and they can shoot down missiles. You know, we are getting quite a bit of lag. I wonder if one of these players, or maybe it's me, um, who hasn't applied the fix. I mean, I should still be good because my drivers are the same as when we casted the last tournament <clears throat> so I'm not mm, really I don't, sure well I don't know uh, what other people's experience has been with the, uh, the the lag but for me like it's this seems more like network lag oh it does okay but but I mean again that's just my experience and I, I know other people had you know, different symptoms, I guess, with the lag. But, like, for me, it was completely unplayable. Well, we'll see uh, in, in the next rounds with different players, and hopefully it, it, it's better. Um, well, reminder to any players out there who might be uh, tuning into the stream, make sure that you have that fix applied. And uh, if you need uh, to know how to do that, just uh, submit a ticket, and we'll, we'll make sure you get the video. Oh yeah, the ticket system is still there, isn't there? <laughs> I forgot about that. That was pretty good system. Got the job done. Yeah. Well, the pings are are pretty good, and the sim is is decent. So I don't know. We'll 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 figure it out. We'll figure it out if it's a persistent issue. I'm a little surprised that uh, Polar put down that point defense. It was only three bots coming at him. Yeah, Soul Ripper is uh, pointing it out too. Yeah, I mean now it it feels more like a like maybe a PC lag almost. 
So maybe Polar is, is lagging. I know he crashed in the lobby before we started. So um, now it's a little better, though. Somebody probably closed something. <clears throat> yeah, um, well, yeah, I, I did stop my porn torrents. You know? <laughs> I, I, I realized they were still going. Were you watching uh, sexy Cybranosaurus Rex videos? <laughs> Dude, Cybranosaurus Rex 9, the dirtiest one. <laughs> oh my god. Were you just re-watching that Alpha X versus Osmos final in uh, the last Invitational? Is that what you get off to these days? <laughs> well, I've been outed. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm still surprised that Polar Bear continues to pump out these cruisers. What, what does he think he's going to get done with them? They, I yeah, mean, I all, toge all together they've killed one mass extractor and forced a bunch of adapters yeah and that was only one of them <laughs> well i mean now it feels like they're they're starting to get through uh i think that's why a solar ripper kind of has to build a second um land factory here i don't know maybe maybe this is gonna work out but i don't know if it's too terribly efficient solar ripper just has to keep expanding which he is I think he needs to expand back down to the bottom of the island as well a little more. Um, but yeah, I think he should be fine even if he loses a couple of his core mass extractors. I mean, obviously it'd be better not to, but he could he could take it. Yeah, and we, we are still at that point where we only have two air factors here for polar and uh he's putting research stations down but now we're at almost 11 minutes and no matter how many research stations he puts out it's gonna take a little while he really hasn't killed that much yet and uh now soul ripper has those cobras coming out which is gonna be very very useful honestly i think I think that the uh, research advantage for Soul Ripper is offset by the few kills that Polar did manage to get. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and we have. Like, uh, it's it's not much per kill, but it does add up. Yeah. Soul Ripper. Few planes gonna... early, some bots. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Soul Ripper is also going to intercept this expansion uh, as well, so that's nice. He does lose his air at the top right. But um, you know it's gonna it's gonna take some time for Polar to get out some bombers, and it looks like Soul Ripper is already building a lot of um, adapters uh, from his uh, side expansions as well. So I think he should be fine until ACs come out. Well, that's always when it falls apart for a Cybran. Soul Ripper does finally lose that factory, and that, unfortunately, that was the uh, the vetted land factory. Um, mm. But that's the only building that's gone down to this this cruiser uh, contain. Yeah, well, eventually, I think this is gonna break through the adapters. Like, there's, I think we played a very similar game uh, in one of our tournaments that me and G have played. Um, where eventually there's just too many cruisers no matter how many adapters you have. Um, unless you're well, just building out of like three or four land factories, but... I was going to say, I think that's part of the issue here. The the expanded, uh, the expansion factories on the wings are nice, but one or two of those should have been back home to help with the adapter spam. Yeah, and I think... Um, Soul Ripper is probably doing the right thing here. He's pausing his land factory to get more land factories out as quickly as possible. Really like to see another land factory over there on the left as well. And I think that's what you got to do here <clears throat> because this is kind of a, you might not see it right away, but it's, it's a little bit more of a turtley play from um, Polar Bear. 
and you just have to start doing damage here within the next few minutes um, as quickly as possible and that's what those forward factories will allow him to do and the first oh. AC1K is already on the way though did you see that? I don't know if you pointed this out already but we have recyclers against the cruisers oh I did not yeah, that's hmm. actually a brilliant kind of counter, I think. Well... Assuming they don't die. <laughs> I mean, this is a rough spot for them, though, because... What are recyclers good against? Okay, they're, they're gonna get you out of this cruiser spot, maybe. But what else are they good against? Megas. You're not playing against Cybrans, so... Eh. Well, right now, the, the significant issue is the cruisers. And the adapters are help will help against the air. So if you deal with the cruisers, like I think he's he's brilliant. I just don't know if these recyclers are gonna do enough damage to the cruisers quickly enough. <clears throat> and it looks well, like yeah, if, Fuller even is if they do targeting the, the, the recyclers. Sorry. Yeah, even if they do uh, decent damage to the cruisers though, it's just where do you go from there? You've dumped all this research into into that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like, I kind of like it, but I feel like he's struggling for resources. If he could like get out, I don't know, like six of them right now, very rapidly. Yeah, I think it would be very, very good. But right now he's not recycling. Are those even like out of range? I, I, I don't really know their range um, too well. No, yeah. they're they're working out. Oh, they are. I just I haven't yep. seen a cruiser go down yet. <laughs> There's a cruiser at about half health, and then ooh, yep. Part of the problem is I think the range is. So like, if you draw a line right through the middle of the group of cruisers, mm -hmm. I think that's about where the range is. Okay. So cruisers are like moving out of range, and then the recyclers have to be retargeted. There goes one. Yeah. Finally, one cruiser does fall down. There's a couple of other, other ones, ones that are kind of really low health. I think a Soul Ripper should just focus down one with uh, yeah. both their cyclers. I don't know why he's split focusing, but yeah, it seems to be doing the trick, honestly, right now. Maybe one more recycler, and that would be the optimal amount. We do have that first AC coming on the left, or sorry, right hand side here. And this is a big problem. Yeah, there are adapters here, but honestly, this many adapters aren't going to do enough to the AC, I don't think. But they can zone. They can zone, but AC is outrange adapters if properly microed, so... Once those shields start going down, adapters do best when they're clustered up, so the, the area of effect splash damage is just brutal. This is a rough situation for Soul Ripper, and I don't really see how he's going to deal with the AC-1K. Yeah, this AC is going to... Yeah, there's not enough adapters here on the left-hand side. Soul Ripper has to split. Yeah, this is going to be uh, very rough, and I, I think... Um, He's going to lose his left expansion here for sure. And yeah, second AC-1K is about to about to join the battle. We got three more AC-1Ks in production. Two of them are really close to being finished. Yeah, I mean, he could structure that O, but that's not going to do enough damage. Um, I think at this point we got to rebuild another land factory here in the main base. We do have air coming out, which I was going to say, like, I think um, a good counter to this would be just try and spam out as much air as you can and just try to take fights over the adapters at this point um, while still pushing on land. I think that's 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 how you counter this, but Soul Ripper just didn't manage to set that up quite. Um, and yeah, there's now a total of five air gantries for Polar Bear. I think this is going to be Polar's game. Yeah, it's been Polar's game for a little while, I think. Well, I still disagree with, uh, with the general build he took. 
and the amount of cruisers that he built. Because, I mean, what did these cruisers really accomplish? I mean, they, they caused the, the adapter spam, yes, but now the adapter spam is pretty good against the anti or the air that he has. Wow, uh, one uh, gunship does actually go down. Nice focus fire. Uh, needs to split the adapters. I'm not sure why those adapters are not splitting. Really needs to split hand focus fire, but... Yeah. It does do a decent job here. I think maybe one more will go down. No. Yeah, that's that's pretty rough. And uh, artillery will be the next progression. That's uh, not bad, all things considered. I don't think Soul Ripper can't push anymore. But now we're in this weird situation where Polar Bear just has a massive economy and Soul Ripper doesn't. And that's really what's going to be the determining factor here, I think. Yeah. Well, we've got so many AC-1Ks on the field already and five gantries. It's just, I, I don't see the uh, artillery getting out quick enough to make a difference. I don't know. I don't know about that. Because there are a lot of adapters. If, if they're nicely split and Soul Ripper manages to get some more air out, I think he's good for the next three to four minutes. But you're right. I mean, it's it's going to be close. Um, the nice thing here is that a lot of Polar Bear's units or buildings are clumped over there on the left. So that's going to be nice. But we need more mass from Soul Ripper. Like, he can't, he can't really sustain production of um, artillery and, and adapters right now. Well, he can't really expand either, though. Um... He can expand to a few mass points uh, on the left and right. Well, that's true, because there's air now. You're right. Oh, no. He's going to lose his air, too, here. Wow. Oh, and that's, that's like, really bad. Yeah, that's Really, huge. really bad. I <laughs> because mean, that air is the only thing that's realistically yeah. going to be able to kill the AC-1Ks. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the, I think the adapters... Yeah, the adapters shoot up, but AC-1Ks outrange them, and Polar's micro is going to be on point. Yeah, yeah, this is um, this is definitely game over now. Unless somehow magically all of this air goes down here in this engagement. But no, again, the adapters are not split, and uh, yeah, that's just a massacre. Two artillery pieces is nice, but three is really what it takes to to kick it into high gear and start yeah. destroying buildings quickly. And uh, he's not even targeting down the, the important base here. <laughs> well, I think he's just going for the starting four mass extractors. Uh, yeah. I think all of the mass extractors where Polar's ACUs are sufficiently vetted, and there's more high priority targets there. So, well, oh yeah, I'd be targeting the gantries first yeah. if I knew where they were, and I'm, I'm not sure the Soul Ripper does. I don't think he's gotten a scout off over on that side of the map in quite a while here. Yeah. And honestly, I think at this point we can just snipe. Uh, or maybe fire once on that adapter blob, and then uh, we're good. We're good to go. Game one. Polar Bear is looking very good to win this one. Uh, with this, our uh, Solar Ripper does call GG. This is a best of two, so and every game really, really does matter. So we will see if Solar Ripper can bring it back on his map pick, which I believe is Kite Labs. So we are going to jump right into that and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game two of round number one of the Serpents Open November qualifier. And we are back. 
with uh, Spiffy Boy, who will introduce our players once again. All right, we'll start over here on the right side of QAI Labs. Spawning in once again as the yellow Cybern player, it is Soul Ripper 77. And he is throwing down a couple of early research stations. He's left one unfinished, and he's going to finish that off with his commander in just a second. Uh, and Knight, what's going on on the other side of the map? On the other side of the map, his opponent is playing a little more standard for this map. It is our orange UEF commander, Polar Bears. And he has opened up with an air factory. I'm going to get a quick scout, which is just about there to see what um, Soul Ripper is up to. And well, I'll tell you what. If I'm Polar Bear right now, I see this. I'm thinking, Mega, kill him before he gets it. Yeah, but he's actually plopping down a land factory. <laughs> um, I don't know about that one. Yeah, somebody somebody commented on uh well it was Osmos, full disclosure, um saying that Mega is not good on this map, <laughs> and I'm like, what? I mean, yeah, there's I think um if maybe somebody three fact rushes or, or something I don't know maybe maybe it's not good, but a lot of the build progressions on this on this map, um allow for a Mega to come out pretty relatively safely and relatively quickly. I mean, we we all saw the Amayoba build. That's uh, this is the map where that that was kind of I don't know if discovered, but at least I kind of discovered it. Um, and I think it just works very well on this map. And then we saw it kind of reproduced even on different maps like um, Way Station Zeta, and you know, kind of cho more choky maps is where it's it's better. It works okay on uh, something like Open Palms as well, though, if you can survive the early game. I I actually don't think that that build is good on Open Palms. Um, you can I didn't just... say it was good. I said it could work. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the players, right? I mean, if... Yeah. <clears throat> but um, if, if a player plays well, I don't think that build can work on that map particularly. But anyway, we do have expansions for both players here going towards the center. Polar Bear is going to prioritize land over air. I think he he's not even making air anymore, uh, which is honestly kind of surprising. And I actually don't like this because Soul Ripper is already making Brackman. And, you know, the adapters are going to be quite nice with preventing some of that damage. So Honestly, I think the adapters were why Polar stopped making air. Um, yeah. Because the goal of the air is one to scout, two to maybe force adapters, and he's forced the adapters. Yeah, I think Although, I actually, to be honest, I don't know if it was that much, so much forced or if that was Soul Ripper's um, uh, plan from the get go because they came out so fast that it just kind of made me think he was going for him anyways. Yeah, I think I would actually agree. I would just, I think if you're transitioning like this, I would place down a research station before transitioning to land, maybe. I don't know. It's it's a tough call, but here we, we do have a lot of mobile missile launchers, I presume, to deal with the adapters. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't dislike the idea of, uh, of making a few bombers for defensive purposes here and uh, maybe bombing this blob when the shields are down, you know. So far, the only bomber is just being used as a scout. Oh, there is a research station. I missed. I missed that going up. So maybe, maybe he did do that. I think it went like like factory research factory. Not quite enough Brackman there yet to really close off the choke point here. We do have Demolishers also coming out. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, I think Soul Ripper may have built one too many land factories if he wants to go Mega, and I think Mega is probably 
the better choice here because we don't have P shields yet. I don't know. Tough call either way, I think. Yeah, Polar's now getting his fourth land factory up as well. We will need Loyalist here at some point, though. I mean, Brackmen are nice, but... One misclick and this party is over. I mean, Polar hasn't built too many tanks yet either. I think I see like six there. Seven. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think either player uh, are kind of not planning to really push this out. Uh, I do like uh, Soul Ripper using ground fire. That's pretty nice. About to say the same thing. I just yeah, don't know I, what the I plan mean, here from either player. I think they're just going to play defensively until they can get their experimentals. Honestly, I'd be surprised to see either player go experimentals in this situation. Ooh, big Brackman hit. Oh, nice. Yeah, that can help always. <laughs> uh, Polar Bear trying to ground fire here as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, as the Cybran here, I think really the thing to do would be just spam out land, land factories and just keep up the pressure. And I like the idea here from Polar Bear, the way he's setting up his buildings here, uh, or factory specifically. I would just only leave maybe a little more room here. If he does end up going into land experimentals especially, it would be very, very nice. But if uh, Soul Ripper did go Mega, obviously the shields here would be really nicely poised to protect from that. Well, and that might be an indication that maybe Polar is not thinking about going land experimentals if yeah. he doesn't really care about them moving around in his base. Right. I think if he does go experimentals, it will be AC1K again. Um, but, you know, Fat Boy is honestly, I feel like, really good on this map, and especially a jackhammer. <laughs> but that's. Uh, I was going to say, I want to see a jackhammer. When's I the know, last time we I saw a jackhammer? Uh, oh, the, whoa, whoa. All right. Well, we we're both wrong, Spiff. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we will see one. <clears throat> Come on, Polar, make it a jackhammer. I I don't think there's going to be a jackhammer this this quickly. No, nano gun though. Ooh, that's going to be a nasty connection. She looks pretty good against nice nano gun. Here. Yeah, but uh, not against this many Brackman. I really like this progression from Soul Ripper. He's, I think he's realizing that this is a defensive play from from Polar Bear, maybe even realizing there's a Gantry coming up here. Uh, needs to continue microing here very well. Every Brackman is important here. He's going to manage to pick off one more factory here. PD coming up here, kind of panicking from Polar Bear, pausing that land Gantry as well. Where are the Cobras? Cobras would be perfect cobras. right now. I don't think he actually needs Cobras. I think the Brackmen are actually going to be doing enough job, a uh, uh, bang up job here against these shields. And uh, he's getting a lot of nice connections. And that factory does go down. Yeah, this is a sweet timing by Soul Ripper. I really like this play. Um, there is now a point defense, but I think Soul Ripper just needs to be really careful with his ACU at this point. Yeah, see, that's why I'm thinking Cobras would be really nice here, because he could stay back and stay a little safer. His ACU is yeah. down below half health. Would help with the PDs, I agree. But I don't know. I think he's fine here. Uh, oof, 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 oof. He's taking a lot of damage, though. This could be it. It might be an overextended. Oh, yeah, my like God. That. Soul Ripper, my boy. Well, what was firing? Like, the PDs were firing on his ECU? The or? PDs, there were some tanks um, and uh, some demolishers that, like, just were lobbing shots at him from real short range. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, that's uh, round one, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, Soul Ripper kind of fudged this one up, but it was a, a really interesting series, honestly, watching these two players play. And I'm excited to see uh, how both of these players progress. Of course, Soul Ripper has already qualified for the season final. 
Uh, but if a polar bear keeps this up and wins this one, uh, you know, the Wii will also qualify, and that's going to make a really interesting final. But for now, we're going to take a little break, see where the tournament is at, and uh, we'll be back very, very shortly with round number two. Don't go anywhere. If you're still watching, give a thumbs up to this video. If you like the video, leave a comment. If you love the video, please subscribe. And if you are blown away by it, check out my Patreon page. This has been Knight. Take care and peace out.